Want to do more in less time? Don't we all? Hi, fellow happy writers. My name is Vivian Reese, and I want to help you write, publish, and market your novel. Today, I'm going over four healthy habits that will allow you to have more productive days. These are tips that are physically or mentally healthy, and they're not your typical workout three times a week tips. We are jumping right in today. So tip number one, tidy up. I'm a messy person, so trust me, this one's a hard one. But since I'm pregnant and I'm now nesting, it's been a little easier to get rid of everything. I want to purge it all seriously. I want to throw everything away. Tidying up not just your workspace, but your entire house and your life allows you to see exactly what you want in your life. Plenty of these things pile up around us and they're not representative of things that we want. Maybe at some point we did want them, but now we don't. Um, or a good example is any gift you've ever been given that you kind of felt meh about. You might have gotten some this holiday season. I strongly urge everyone in here to read or listen to The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, linked down below, because we all need help in this area. Maybe not all of us, but I think 99% of the population struggles with keeping a tidy home, myself ultra included, and a tidy life, not just a tidy home. I've been the most productive in my life when I was a college student living in a tiny apartment. I didn't have room for things, so I didn't have them. And because of that, I didn't struggle to keep my place tidy, which gave me more time to focus on doing what I wanted to do. I'm also pretty productive when I'm on a work trip and it's just me and my tiny little suitcase in a hotel room. There's something to be said about minimizing all the crap you have. I have accumulated a lot of crap. <laughs> Tip number two is to pick one healthy focus and do it. I'm mentioning a lot of books here and I apologize for that, but if you've read The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, then you know where I'm going with this. If you wanna be healthier, pick one thing, not a million, and start with that one thing. Why? Because you create a trickle-down effect to all the other parts in your life. This should be something that you can do frequently throughout the week, not multiple times a day, but maybe once a day, so that you can see the impact that it has in your life. For me, this was drinking a green smoothie every morning. Before I eat anything else, I drink a green smoothie. It wakes me up and immediately makes me feel good and accomplished that I've already got like half my veggies in before 7 a.m. Over time, habits like this can help you realize how good you feel when you eat your vegetables. It can make you maybe eat healthier dinners as a result or take the time in the morning to journal while you're drinking your green smoothie so that you can enjoy it a little longer. Your energy may increase enough that you wanna work out now, which will give you more energy, and the more energy you have, the more productive you'll be. So a small change can have a butterfly effect on the rest of your life. Start small and focus on something you know you're gonna do frequently. It's a small win, and that effect will make it easier to make other healthy practices into a habit. Don't choose 50 things at once, start with one thing. And read The Power of Habit, just go ahead and add it to your TBR. This next one's kind of funny, my explanation of it. <laughs> anyway, tip number three is to get outside. There's something called earthing or grounding if you haven't heard of it, and while it sounds hippy-dippy, it is, it makes you feel better. There's a bajillion studies on this topic, so do a good amount of Googling if you want to, if you want to entertain yourself. But essentially, earthing means connecting to the earth, skin to skin, and helps bring down free radicals in your body by absorbing more free electrons from the earth. It's hippie. Just do it. See if you feel like a hippie. If you don't, um, just see if it makes you feel better because I'm pretty sure that it will. Walk outside barefoot. Um, sit in the grass and meditate or read and do your homework or whatever. If anything, breathing air that hasn't been circulated inside for God knows how long will do wonders and make you feel better. The, that was my knee, the gentle sounds of nature, not my knee, may help you relax more than sitting inside, listening to the buzzing of your heater or the clickety ticking of your refrigerator. If you feel better, you work better. 
plain and simple. If you go on walks or runs outside already, if that's a practice that you already have, take the time to take your shoes off so you can have, or just sit down in the grass so you can have direct contact with the earth. People go as far as finding ways to ground themselves inside, like while they're sleeping, look it up, and then just get outside. Maybe look it up outside. Number four is to be thankful. Don't ask me where that accent came from. This one is huge. Being thankful puts you in a positive mindset. A lot of us fall into a negative mindset during the hustle and bustle of the day. I tend to focus on the negatives of the life rather than the positives. And I think being thankful every day has helped me tremendously in not being a constant Daria. Why should you not want to be like Daria or like Eeyore? Because Feeling good means doing good, and doing good means you'll feel good. I have no idea what I just said. I just said stuff. It's a lot easier to be creative when you're in a good mood. That's it. It's a lot more enjoyable. It'll reduce your daily stress, which will make you healthier. And in the long run, it'll make you more productive. See how I'm tying all these things in together? You don't have to go out and get a gratitude journal and sit by candlelight while you do this, while you sip some tea. Just thinking grateful thoughts is enough. You don't have to write them down. I write them down in an Evernote online. That's all. I don't do this. I do this. <laughs> but you can just think them more frequently. When you wake up, think of one big thing that you're really thankful for. When you're in a bad mood, stop yourself and force yourself to be thankful. Trust me, I know how hard it is to quell that inner dragon when all you want to do is be angry for the rest of the day, but it'll change your mood. I promise you. You'll feel better after you list a few things that you're grateful for. It's a challenge, but try it. All right, that's all I have for y'all today. Hopefully these simple tips can help you become a far more productive and creative person. They've all helped me, so I pray that they'll do the same for you. Drop a comment down below for anything you feel has helped you become a more productive person, as I'm sure all of you have something creative and helpful. With that being said, make sure to check out my brand new course, Dreamer to Doer, which launched last week. This course is all about the first steps of finishing and publishing your novel. I just like a piece of fuzz just try to go in my mouth. Anyway, the course is about making the time and having the focus and motivation to write your book. The link to the product page is down below. Also, if you haven't heard, I have a free novella. You can get it for free. That's also linked down below. I hope you all had and are having a wonderful holiday this year, and I hope you take the time while you're in the thick of it <laughs> to be thankful for everything that you have. I know I have so much to be thankful for, and I thank the universe every single day. I'm not even joking. I thank the universe every day. Subscribe to this channel because I post new writing videos every Wednesday, and I would appreciate it so much if you gave this video a thumbs up. It does make a difference, and it does help support my channel. Also, if you're interested in some bonus content or some one-on-one -on -one help, a little more one-on-one -on -one help, I do have a Patreon page, so that's linked down below as well if you want to check it out. I would appreciate it very much. Anyway, I'll talk to you next week where I'll be talking about creating aesthetics for your novel. You know, those pretty little social media posts that everybody loves. Until then, happy writing!